the midpoint formula, the Pythagorean theorem, and the distance formula. Before we get to the coordinate plane with the midpoint formula, I wanted you to look at a number line and think about this. If I give you two numbers and I want to find the middle, think about it. If I gave you, a, if you had a test score of 90 and a test score of 100, the middle of those two would just be the average. It would be 95. 90 plus 100 divided by 2. Right in the middle, 95. It's the same thing here. The middle is the average if you have two points. So all I have to do to find the midpoint or the middle is take 2 plus 8 and since there are two of them divide by 2. So this is 10 divided by 2 which of course is 5. So that ends up being the midpoint. So to find the midpoint if you have two numbers you take the average. Now homework hint here what if you knew the midpoint what if you knew it? What if it was 7 and you wanted to find uh, one of the points. You didn't know one of the points. Uh, so I know this one. I know three. And I know and this is my midpoint right here. It's seven. Uh, how would I find that other point? Well, yeah, and a lot of you are looking and going, okay, I can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and figure it out. Right. But we're on a coordinate plane. It's a little trickier. What you can do is you know it's over here somewhere, right? You can call it x. Remember what you do. You take the average. You take 3 plus x and you divide it by 2. And that gives you the midpoint. So uh, we can solve this. Uh, well, let's see. Hang on a sec here. Midpoint was 7. Right here. So we can solve this by multiplying both sides by 2 and that will cancel those twos because 2 divided by 2 is 1 3 plus x is equal to 14 and I can subtract 3 from both sides and I see that x would be 11 so that's that other point so if they gave us a midpoint of 7 and they give us one of the values 3 I could find the, uh, the other point by just again average them include that x is is add them up and divide by 2 and then just solve so the other point the missing point would be 11 and then see the midpoint of 7 what we just did on a number line applies here exactly it's just that we have two number lines we have an X number line and a Y number line but the process is the same remember the midpoint to find it, we take the average. So what I'm going to do is average the x's, and we can make a formula for that. I take x, the first x, or the second x, whichever you want to do, and add them up and divide by 2. So that will give me the midpoint for the x. I'm looking at the x number line. And then I can take the y points, and again I'm looking at the y number line here, and add them up and divide by 2. And what you see here is the midpoint formula. So look at the x number line. I'll take the x's, uh, which are 2 plus 7, and divide by 2. Um, I'm finding the midpoint of this segment right here. I'm going to find the midpoint somewhere in the middle there. So 2 plus 7 divided by 2. And again, I'm, f I'm using 2, 1, and 7, 4. So I'll do the same thing with the y's. 1 plus 4 divided by 2. So I'm going to find the midpoint of, looks like the hypotenuse here. Uh, I'll add them up. See, that's 9 divided by 2, which is 4.5. And this is 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5. So I can see the midpoint would be 4.5. So that's the x right there. And I go up. And two and a half. Two and a half for y, and I'm right there in the middle, and there's my midpoint. To, to find the midpoint of a segment, we just average the x's and average the y's. That's all there is to it. 
So let's take another look. I'll squeeze it down here, an example, really quick. Let's say I gave you a point, 3, negative 4, and another point, 5, 10. And I asked you to find the midpoint of these two here. I would just add up the x's, 3 plus 5 divided by 2. Add up the y's, negative 4 plus 10 divided by 2. I'm averaging them. Can't read my 10. And that's 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And that's 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And the midpoint of this, the segment that would join these two points would be 4, 3. Pythagorean theorem. Now you've probably heard of the Pythagorean theorem before. Pythagorean theorem says the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So if I add up the two legs, that's A and B, and A and B can be either one. You can switch them. It doesn't matter. These are the legs. It's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. It's always the biggest side because it's opposite the biggest angle. The biggest angle in the right triangle is the right angle. Any numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem, whole numbers, are called Pythagorean triples, and the most common of which is a 3, 4, 5. Notice that 3 squared plus 4 squared, in fact, equals 5 squared, because 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. So there are lots of common Pythagorean triples. Um, in fact, if you, just, if you just double every side or triple every side, you get another Pythagorean triple. So if I doubled them all, 6, 8, 10, that's a triple, Pythagorean triple. If I multiply them all by 3, uh, 9, 12, 15, that's another Pythagorean triple. Um, there's, they don't have to be all in the ratio 3, 4, 5. Uh, another one is 5, 12, 13. And again, notice that 25, 5 squared, plus 12 squared, 144, is equal to 13 squared, 169. Now, the way we use the Pythagorean theorem is I'll give you uh, some lengths. I'll say, all right, uh, what if uh, one side was 10 and another side was 15? And what I want you to do is find C. What is C? So I would go over here and say, all right, uh, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. That's 10 squared plus 15 squared is equal to C squared. I'll go over here. That's 100 plus 225 is equal to C squared. That's 325 is equal to C squared. And I can square root both sides and figure out what C is. Remember, the square root of C squared is C. Uh, now, you can make this a decimal. A lot of times in upper-level math, though, we look for perfect squares. And I'm guessing that 325 uh, divides by 25. Let me try my calculator. 325 divided by 25 is 13. So this is 25 times 13. I could Remember, this is under the square root. I can take the square root of 25. It goes out in front of the root. It's 5. And left underneath will be the 13 that I couldn't take the square root of. So 5 root 13 is what it would be. Um, sometimes I might ask you to just punch it in and round it to the tenth. Uh, like I said, a lot of times we, we like exact answers, so we, we do it in simplest radical form. So it turns out we can use Pythagorean theorem to find uh, the distance between two points. So I'm looking for the distance between 2, 1 and 7, 4 call it D. And the Pythagorean theorem says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And that C is our distance. It's, we're going to make it a D. D for distance. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, look at these points. It turns out that we can, we can find A and B and then use that to find C. So, uh, uh, all the way from here to here is 7. And this little piece that's not in the triangle 
is, is in fact the 2 that sits in that point. 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. So notice that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 across the bottom there. And I can do the same thing here. All the way up to here is 4. And this little piece right down here that's not in the triangle is, is the 1, the distance. So 4 minus 1. And that gives us the 3. So uh, we can use that then to find the distance. We can use Pythagorean theorem. We'll say 5 squared plus 3 squared is equal to c squared. That's 25 plus 9 is equal to c squared. And that ends up being 34 equals c squared. And 34 doesn't have any perfect squares in it. It's 2 times 17. Both are prime. Uh, so if we need to use this to do something, we could just punch it in the calculator, square root of 34, and it ends up being about, C is about 5.8. In simplest radical form, it would be root 34. Now, it turns out we can make a formula with this, uh, and we can make some general points here. I'll call this x1, comma y1, and that's just x1 is any point. Uh, y1 is any point, and I'll call this one x2, a y2, and this x2 is just different than x1. These are different variables, so that's subscript. It allows us to have an infinite number of variables of one letter, and y2 is a different variable, so these stand for any points. Well, look what we did. We did 4 minus 1. Well, instead of 4, I'll use y2 minus... Um, Instead of 1, look at the 1 right here in the first point right there, I'll use y1. That's 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1. So I'm looking at the points. Let me take a different color here. I'm taking the 4 and subtracting the 1, and that is how we got this length of 3. So I can again take y2 instead of the 4 and y1 instead of the 1, and that gives us, this is what got us the 3. And 7 minus 2, instead of the 7, I'll change colors again. Instead of the 7, we can use our general point, x2 minus. Instead of the 2, we'll use our general point, x1. And this is how we got the 5 right here. We subtracted the x's to get the 5. And we subtracted the y's to get the 3 right there. So we put this in Pythagorean theorem. And we said that x2, let me go up above a little bit here. x2 minus x1, remember that was the 5, squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is equal to c squared. Now, instead of c, let's call it d for the distance between those two points. What you see right here is the distance formula. It's just that uh, usually what they do is they take the square root of both sides so we'll take the square root here and the square root here. And that leaves us with d, the square root of d squared is d. I'm going to flip this around. Equals x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And what you see right there is the distance formula. So that was all confusing, but that's where it comes from. Uh, so to use it, all you need are two points. You subtract the x's, because that gives you one leg of the triangle. You subtract the y's, that gives you the other leg of the triangle, the right triangle. And then you square them. You're putting in Pythagorean theorem. And remember, this was uh, c squared, which ended up being d squared. We took the square to both sides, and we get our answer. This is just a handy formula, and we use it in every chapter so let's simplify this just a little bit. You remember slope? Remember how you subtracted the y's up top and the x's below? And that's how we got m, the slope. This, this is the slope triangle. So that triangle we just made is the same triangle as the slope triangle. And there's my right angle right there. 
And to get y's over run, we subtracted the y's because that gave us the y's. And to get the x's, we uh, the run, we subtracted the x's, and that gave us the run again. So all we did is just we took that slope triangle and we called the distance here between the two points d, and we used Pythagorean theorem. So our a was x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1. So you should be able to remember this from slope because that's that's the run of, of the slope triangle. Plus y2 minus y1, that's the rise, which ends up being that leg squared, and that was equal to d squared. And again, all you do is you square root both sides, and that gives us d. So let's use this uh, in a problem. Let's say I had two points. They were 3, negative 4, and 8, uh, how about negative 8, 10. I want to know the distance between these two points. How far apart are they? Well, we'll go d equals the square root of, and I'll subtract the x's. Now, note, watch. Notice it's a subtraction, 3 minus negative 8. That minus is separate from the negative on the 8. That ends up getting it being plus 8 because the double negative. Don't forget the square. Plus negative 4 minus 10 squared. I subtracted the y's, negative 4 minus 10. This ends up being 3 plus 8, which is 11 squared plus, um, careful, you need parentheses, otherwise you'll get a different answer. Negative 14 squared. Uh, this ends up being 121 plus 196 under the square root. And 121 plus 196 is 317. This is the square root of 317. And we'll take the square root of that. And to the nearest tenth, which is reasonable, is about 17.8. So these two points right here are 17.8 apart. Now, at this point, students get the two formulas mixed up. Midpoint formula, distance formula. Midpoint formula is about the average. We added them up, divided by 2. We added the x's up, divided by 2. Added the y's up, divided by 2. This formula is different because we use this, the, the idea of the y2 minus y1 and the x2 minus x1 just like slope to get the legs of the triangle. So we subtract here. We don't add. We subtract in the distance formula. So you're going to have to get those straight. Students have trouble with it every year. Study a little bit. You'll get it.